Hello ladies and welcome back to the channel. My name is Mark Run. And today, I'm feeling a lot better. A couple days ago I was told you guys about how I was feeling a little I was feeling a little under the weather. You know, this was me, this was the weather. You know, I was right underneath it, just a little bit. But today I'm feeling a lot better. So today we got like I don't even know the part. It'll be in the title of the video. You guys can read the title. But um of our yearly budget car series, we do this at the end of every year, where I go over 10 cars under 25k, then 20, then 15, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1, thousand dollars, all in descending order, with zero duplicates whatsoever, and today is six thousand dollars. Six thousand dollars today. Okay, so that means that there's ten cars for under six thousand uh, dollars, with one honorable mention, because I like to include a truck, but I like to be able to title it cars. And so I always include one honorable mention, which is a truck, so I get to include my truck. Uh, also, we do Song of the Days for these. So Song of the Day today is Drake, Time Flies. I'm not a big Drake fan, but this song, it hits. It hits. Well, all we do is get right into the list with number 10. Coming in at the number 10 spot is going to the Toyota Corolla S. I actually met one of you guys in person who drove a Toyota Corolla S, and it was really cool. I was at a gas station, and it pulled up, and I was like, that's a nice looking car. So I went outside, and I told the guy, hey, I like your car and he goes you're mark Roden. i watch you on youtube and i was like no way that's freaking awesome so if you're watching this video hey man i liked your car it was really cool but anyway it comes with a 1.8 liter inline four making 132 horsepower and it's front wheel drive is it the fastest car in the world no no not really <laughs> you know what i mean like no it's close it's close the bugatti has some it has some work to do to stay ahead of it but it's not quite there yet but it is one of the best reliable plus sporty packages out there you know it's a corolla let's be honest you know let's not try and sugarcoat it here it is a corolla but with a little bit of pep in its step that's pretty much all you're asking for it's not going to be the fastest car out there it's not going to be like incredibly fast around corners or anything like that uh but it's just a reliable way to have a decent time when driving Coming in at the number nine spot, however, is going to the Mercedes C300 W204. The W204 chassis is like one of my favorite Mercedes-Benz chassis of all time. They just look so good, especially the C63. I don't even have to, I don't even have to explain myself there. The W204 C63 just makes me, ooh, ooh, I can't even explain. I would get demonetized if I explained on YouTube, but it comes with a three liter V6 making 228 horsepower and it's rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. They do offer that Mercedes-Benz 4Matic, uh, which by the way is, I'm sorry, Benz owners, but that is the goofiest way to describe <laughs> your all wheel drive system. X-Drive, pretty cool. Quattro, pretty cool. Volkswagen's R, that's freaking sick. It's just literally just the letter R. But formatic is goofy. Either way, though, this W204 C300 is not the fastest Benz out there, but it's also not the most unreliable Benz out there. So it is still a little unreliable, but at least it, it's 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 not normal Mercedes levels, and you still get the relative decent comfort of a Mercedes. This is just like the reliable list of reliable cars because number eight is the Honda Del Sol. Now, admittedly, East Coast can. How you doing, by the way, buddy? I know you're. I know you're lurking in those comments. I know you saw this one. But either way, admittedly, the Del Sol is not the most reliable Honda out there, and the reason why isn't because the motor itself is bad or anything like that. No, it's just like every any other Honda motor. It's incredibly reliable. But these cars are just a little bit old at this point. Uh, they do come with a 1.6 liter inline four, making. I read 160 horsepower, um, and it is front wheel drive, but there are so many websites out there saying that Del Souls make this much horsepower. Some of them say they only make 106. Some of them say they make all the way up to 160. So it's, just, it's around that range, you know, 100 to 160 horsepower. I guess it depends on the year. It also probably depends heavily on the condition. Again, I want to you know, state that and make that very obvious. Del Souls, I they, they they like attract the wrong crowd apparently because there are some really stupid Honda Del Sol owners out there that do not take care of their cars. So just be careful when going to buy one. It's like the it's like the third gen Camaro. Great car, but just the owners are like murderers. Seventh place is another car that kind of falls into that category actually. The Mitsubishi Eclipse GT. 2G. It's the second generation, most popular generation by far. One of the most underrated JDM cars, in my opinion, ever, especially the GSX. I mean, oh my God, it's so underrated. But um, it also falls within the Del Sol, like the owner may be a crack addict category because for some reason, every single one of these are absolutely destroyed. Either way, it comes with a two liter inline four, making 140 horsepower, and it is front wheel drive. And since you're giving yourself that $6,000 budget, I think it's going to be, I think it's safe to say that you can be able to find a really relatively decent example of the Eclipse GT because the 2G 
Fuji Eclipse GTs. Um, you can find them in the Spider variant. The Spider variant, pretty much nobody wants, if I'm being honest. But they're the same thing as the Coupe variant, and so they are so cheap. You can find them like under 3K. So, if, but those again, the ones for around 3K, are the ones that you got to watch out for. With the, you know, you might get robbed when you go to buy it. But that's okay because you leave yourself 3K of wiggle room. So now you can make sure you're not going to get robbed. Look at that. I've been looking out for you. Sixth place. Hate that word. Hate that word. Sixth place get it out of here but it's the hyundai veloster turbo it's a weird little hatchback that only has three doors for some reason i don't know why they decide, decided to do that but it is a relatively decent video for under 6k nowadays the fact it, by the way this is the first generation there's technically two gens of the veloster nowadays this is the first one you can find them under 6k relatively easily and when you do they come with a 1.6 liter turbocharged inline four making 201 horsepower and it is front wheel drive now that may not be the most powerful motor out there you know 200 horsepower for a turbocharged car, relatively modern car sounds like a little bit of a scam and to be honest it is if you if you bought it just completely bone stock and kept it bone stock but let's be real we are car guys you are not going to keep your veloster turbo stock and since it is a turbocharged motor that means you could probably get some horsepower out of that Mm -hmm. that's what they call the unit of measurement for power in automobiles you can probably get a, a pretty decent amount out of it because boosted motors are just good at it but back to the land of natural aspiration fifth place is a toyota supra mark three i love the mark three supra i think most people out there nowadays are starting to come to terms with the mark three supra people are starting to fall in love with it almost i would i would honestly, there are some people out there that are crazy enough to like argue that the mark three is better than the mark four now i don't know about looks that's all personal opinion but if you think it is in terms of its actual like performance I'm sorry, but you're just wrong. But either way, it comes with a 2.5 liter inline six, making 200 horsepower in its rear wheel drive. This car comes with a lot of different motors, especially depending on where you're from. Um, but the ones that you're going to find under 6K are not going to be the 1JZ. People are, I know somebody's going to be in the comments be all like, you can find a 1JZ Mark III super dope, bro. Yeah, but you're not finding you're not finding that under, under six thousand dollars that's impossible if you find that under six thousand dollars you struck gold either way though the mark 3 supra is just an incredible jdm icon if you want to have a fun this is admittedly isn't the most reliable one on this list but it's a fun one another car that's not the most reliable one on this list is the number four spot the volkswagen corrado the volkswagen corrado again comes with different engine options depending on which one you get but you can find the vr6 for less than six thousand dollars still how I don't know this car you would expect the Volkswagen Corrado to be like a, one of those like really expensive cars that like collectors enjoy nowadays and nobody else can enjoy them but they're somehow not it comes with a 2.8 liter VR6 making 172 horsepower and it's front wheel drive front wheel drive and Volkswagen are synonymous you kind of have to expect that even if it does come with the VR6 I know you're probably thinking well if it's a VR6 it's got to be all wheel drive no these guys are weird I don't know why they don't just put put it all wheel drive man that would have been sick but either way the Volkswagen Corrado you might not like the looks of it you know you might be blind and not like the looks of the volkswagen corrado and that's okay but to people that do have eyes it is a really good looking car i love it i i, I want one speaking of incredible looking automobiles third place is the nissan 300 zx z32 that's right i'm part british did you guys you guys didn't know that i bet i'm 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 57 percent british Spoiler alert, I'm not actually, I'm 100% American. But either way, the Z32 300ZX is in by far my favorite of the Z line, even though I had a 350Z. I just think the looks of this car are just insane. Uh, however, they do come with a three liter V6, making 222 horsepower, and it is rear, rear, rear wheel drive. But before you guys are like, oh, it's a VQ. It's actually not, it's called a VG. But either way, that is a slightly worse motor than the VQs. Uh, there are gonna be people in the comments that are gonna argue with me on that, but let's be real here, guys. Like this motor is just not the most user-friendly motor out there it's not that reliable and on top of that it doesn't make good power uh it doesn't it can't really handle that much power either and boost or anything like that but on top of all of that stuff it's a real big pain to work on they kind of stuffed this pretty big engine into a pretty small engine bay in these cars uh so i definitely wouldn't recommend this for like a new time driver but overall it's a very fun sports car the second place however also kind of suffers from that problem a little bit it's the bmw 330ci e46 now admittedly i never actually worked on a 330ci however i did work on the 328i e46 my friend ben had one and we, we actually had to take the entire motor out because it, it blew but either way uh it's a really tight engine bay again not as tight as the z32 but pretty damn tight uh it does come with a three liter inline six making 225 horsepower and it is rear wheel drive and this is 100 the best e46 chassis to get unless you can afford the m3 obviously 
and it is such a bargain it is such a freaking bargain 330 ci's are such they look almost identical to an m3 e46 uh they handle almost identical to an m3 e46 the only major difference with these cars is of course the engine the engine is massively different but it's still a really good motor like it's not you're not gonna have it's not like you're going to be sh struck for power, you know? You're not going to be like, oh, man, I really wish I could get more power out of this motor. No, there's plenty of mods for 330Ci motors out there. Of course, we must discuss the honorable mention, which is, again, a truck, because I don't want to include it in my average list since people get mad about that sometimes. It's the Porsche Cayenne first generation admittedly probably the most unreliable vehicle on this list but that's also why it's in the honorable mention spot comes with a 3.2 liter v6 making 247 horsepower in its all-wheel drive yes i know they also came with the v8 good luck finding the v8 under six thousand dollars and if you do find one under six thousand dollars i would just really not recommend buying it i would recommend staying as far away. get a restraining order on the person selling the car as a matter of fact because it's probably going to be an absolute nightmare but first place, I'm an Acura boy. Ah, I'm an Acura. I, you know, I got an Acura Integra. So, of course, you knew it was going to be an Acura. The Acura TSX. I used to talk about this car all the time in my videos. And then for some reason, I, it's like it's like Will Smith came up to me and was like, sorry, and flashed that thing in my face like he was in Men in Black. And I completely forgot about the car. But recently, I've been talking about it again because I remembered it. Because it's just that good. It is so gosh darn good. It comes with a 2-liter inline 4, making 201 horsepower in its front-wheel drive, and that is a K-series, my friend. I'm pretty sure Honda guys will definitely correct me if I'm wrong here, so I'm going out on a limb, but I'm pretty sure it's the same order that they put in the RSX Type S, and if it is, oh my god, you're paying for an RSX Type S, but for significantly, you're getting an RSX Type S, but paying for significantly cheaper. You're paying for a base model RSX, but getting the Type S. And on top of that, people are going to be like, well, what about all the suspension and stuff like that? Guys, I hate to break the news to you. The RSX didn't really have the best suspension out there, okay? So you don't really got to worry about all that, all, all that mumbo jumbo. On top of that, the TSX has four doors! four doors in the same motor and it looks incredible it looks like a tl but more squared off it is just such a good car i love the tsx buy one if you can but ladies and gentlemen that is the end of today's video of the top 10 best sports cars for less than six thousand dollars i hope you guys enjoyed if you did please be sure to like comment and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this we're gonna be hopefully picking back up the pace here again i'm done with my sickness christmas is over we are starting anew there's a new chapter on my life Okay, no, but in all seriousness, we are going to be doing some new things. On top of that, one thing I want to try is you guys know my Mark Roden driving and talking videos. You know what I'm saying? I'm driving and I'm chatting. <laughs> so I want to do those, but with top tens, you know what I mean? So I want to do the Mark Roden driving and chatting, but do a top 10 while I'm driving and chatting. So the thing I'm worried about, though, is that it might be get too boring for you because when I make these top 10 videos in the background, you always see videos of the cars, right? And you guys like that. I, I At least I assume because you watch the video. So I assume that's what you like. But when I'm driving, there won't be backgrounds of the cars. But at the same time, you guys always comment saying like, oh, I love these Mark Roden driving videos. And so I want to merge them together for a couple videos and see how well they do. Um, and if you guys like them, I'll do more of them. But let me know any ideas that you guys have on that because I'm I'm, I'm kind of thinking about it. I want to see if there's anything I could do to that you think would improve those videos uh, and make them more enjoyable to watch. Because I'm, what I'm worried about is that you guys will start watching it, be like, "Oh, this is a cool idea," and then five minutes into the video, you're gonna be like, "Okay, we're still just watching this guy drive and talk. Like it's getting boring at this point." You know what I mean? And so let me know what you guys are thinking on that. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. Das Danya, and have a nice night.